Hello, welcome internet. I'm Ink Knight, and today we are drawing Goku from Dragon Ball Z. I don't really do too many tutorials, but we're going to do one this time, and uh, let's see how things go along, you know? But uh, as for preferences of what I'm using and what kind of technology and pixels and all sorts of stuff I'm doing, I'm using Clip Studio Paint EX, and I have a resolution size of 4,332 for the width and 5,400 for the height, if you're just curious. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and dive straight into this, shall we? Uh, first things first, though. Whenever you're drawing a character that you don't really know or don't really recognize or have a memory of because you don't draw them a lot, you need to have references. So first things first, if you look at the uh, top right of my screen, you'll see that I have a reference of Goku. Um, it's a plain, simple front and back. I think this is just base Goku with uh, his hermit uh, key, turtle hermit key, whatever you want to call it. And as well, I have a reference for a pose. I have a pose that I want for Goku to look like. And if you're looking for tips on how to draw Super Saiyan, I will give you some tips. I'll try to draw both of them for you. But anyways, um, drawing base Goku is the main idea of this uh, tutorial. We're going to be doing a full body version. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Uh, my first layer, I like to have a lighter color. Um, and I, I like to start with trying to draw a bit of a silhouette of how the pose is going to be looking. <clears throat> For us, uh, Goku is going to be having a front forward looking pose because this is kind of like the pose I want. It's not exactly, but I mainly was wanting the hands to be holding the, the belt of the of the uh, karate gi in that pose. That's what I wanted. So anyways, uh, to give you ideas of the measurements, I do have the ruler enabled, uh, but it's going to be kind of rough on how I draw things. And for the pins that I'm using, it's just default G pin stuff of Clip Studio Paint. Uh, you can use the same exact thing in Photoshop or whatever. But uh, right now, I'm just trying to get the head. Um, heads are fairly self straightforward, it's just a circle. Uh, the torso area would be more of a box triangular shape type of shape. Uh, you can also do a bit of an egg shape as well. I kind of like doing that as well, so you can get an idea where the rib cage is. It's going to be like a, I say egg. But you're going to actually have to cut off the bottom half to kind of show the rib cage and where it's at. And this will also give you an idea where the chest is. Um, at the same time, you can draw cir circles on both sides to give an idea of where the shoulders would be. The arm length is uh, goes, or I should say where your bicep, it goes about slightly around where the belly button would be. Luckily, uh, with us in this pose, Goku, his hands is going to be kind of near the belly button area already. So if you think about that, when I just draw these two lines, that's gonna be actually be wrong. Because if we draw the pelvis, the pelvis is gonna be a little bit further down. And I like doing more of a two ovalish type of shapes for the pelvis to kind of give you the idea of how things are gonna be. Uh, however, we're drawing a man here, so the pelvis is gonna be a little bit uh, in line with the shoulders. Uh, so that's usually how um, the male anatomy works on drawing uh, characters. Anyways, um, so we're drawing the hands to the middle of where the belt is. So I like to give an idea of rectangles to kind of simulate the fist, how where the uh, hands are going to be, even though I'm drawing it kind of wrong. Anyways, the the arms are going to be winging out to kind of give that diamond looking shape. Uh, and let's take a look at Goku for where the reference of the belt is. The belt is actually pretty small. It is way above the pelvis, kind of like where the belly button area is. So that what I'm drawing so far is actually fairly accurate. It granted. He's not, he doesn't look super buff yet. Yeah, that's just, unfortunately, that's how <laughs> drawing beginning stages will always usually look like. It's not going to look quite accurate. You're trying to get the idea of how the pose is going to be looking. Anyways, let's draw, let's actually grab everything and scoot it up so we can get space for the feet. If you're drawing this traditionally, uh, 
my tip is to actually kind of draw light and draw small first to kind of get an idea of how everything is going together. And by the way, the legs, if you if you actually measure where the feet are, they can go up a little bit past where how the torso is. So depending on how you draw your uh, pelvis and torso, that's how long your legs need to be. So kind of like where the bottom of the chin would be about near the same measurement if you measure from where the legs get out, reach out of the pelvis. So if we do that measurement idea, grab that and bring it down, that'll be kind of accurate to how where the feet will be. And right now I'm just drawing kind of like circles just to give an idea of where the feet is going to be. Goku, in this drawing, uh, he's, he's got his uh, legs straight out, so I'm actually going to rotate these just a little bit. And remember, right now, all we're doing is trying to get structure. We're not drawing any, any major details right now. We're just trying to get the idea of how the character is supposed to look. If you really want to, you can start trying to figure out on where the chin and head could technically be in shape, which that's what I'm technically doing right now. He has a fairly large neck. It's going to be coming down into where the collarbone would be. Uh, he has his, I forget the muscles. <laughs> uh, traps, there you go. It's the traps. I think it's the traps. Anyways, the traps come out to where the biceps, or not biceps, the uh, delts would be. Goku has some very large uh, deltoids. That's your shoulder muscles, by the way. Um, he also has some very, very large chest muscles, also known as, do I know the terminology for that? I don't know if I do. Uh, chest muscle. Anyways, draw the lats. He has big lats. Uh, you don't really have to draw all this. It's just trying to give uh, the idea of uh, volume for his muscles. Biceps goes in the front. You got big biceps, big old biceps, and these are showing. So, and remember, when you're drawing, I I've always had difficult time drawing the elbows in the past. It you just come with experience, learning this stuff. But I like trying to draw a bit of a circle shape, and then the shoulders will go down, making a bit of a triangle-ish looking shape to uh, form the the form. There, there's a lot of huge, huge muscles. If we actually take a look at the the reference page that I have, these muscles pop out, and see how the how angular the the shape of the shoulders are. And by the way, the reason why these arms don't look big enough because I haven't added the triceps. Triceps goes down forms the rest of how the arm is supposed to look. And like I said, this is all still very, very rough. I haven't even drawn the legs yet. <laughs> oh, shoot. Anyways, back to what I was doing. Actually, I lied. When I said the legs, that, the legs are wrong. The legs need to go about around where the head is. You see, when, when you're drawing, you, you learn on the fly of how the anatomy is on how people draw the characters. Some people draw legs differently than others. Me, I just draw what looks accurate to me. Which this, I can tell that the legs are very short. So we're gonna draw from the head down. It looks like I need to minimize, or not minimize it, but scoot it up a little bit further. Maybe squeeze it down a little bit. Change the shape. And that's why I don't wanna give you sure measurements because with digital art or traditional, you will change as you go. So is that about accurate? And what I'm doing is I'm actually taking my pen, I'm using a stylus, and I'm using it as a bit of a ruler for when I'm drawing the rest of the character. So that gives me an idea where my leg's supposed to be. I don't like the soft eraser though, at least not in this case. All right, so our legs is like that. They're kind of forming a V shape. So let's draw our circle again, for where the base of the heel would be, or sort of, would it be the base? I mean, you kind of flare it out. Anyways, uh, legs, the 
uh, kneecap is not going to be quite, I mean, it is halfway-ish, sort of. It's in this area, type of shape. Granted, luckily with Goku's Gi, it kind of hides most of it. But anyways, what happens to my pen? There we go. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's let's give you the idea of what the pelvis is supposed to kind of look like. Anyways, um, with female characters, the the hips will be a lot larger than male characters. And just to give myself a fresh look, see, it already looks off. That's why uh, I'm flipping things. Um, which, to be fair, this is still in the drafting phase. This is nothing. We haven't gotten into actual details yet. You're just, it's all construction right now. It's all trying to figure out how things are supposed to be looking. If you really want to be super accurate, we could also perform a symmetrical tool for clips to do a paint and try to measure it straight down. So whatever you draw over here is going to be going on to the other side. That's one of the advantages of having uh, digital over traditional. Uh, do I use this all the time? It kind of depends if, this, uh, if the pose is actually symmetrical or not. It really just depends. In this case, I can use it um, just to make it easier and have the uh, video be a lot shorter. <laughs> um, saves us a lot of time and energy to try to figure things out. And the main thing that I'm noticing that is off would be kind of the head, more so or less. And it's all still very, very sketchy, so I mean, that's unfortunately how things kind of kind of roll together. Anyways, uh, drawing, going back to the legs. Uh, Goku's legs, if we're looking at our reference, they point outwards. So... Luckily, we don't have to worry about drawing any feet anatomy here. Just some basic shapes. It's more just like a big old triangle. Big old triangle. And if we were going to try to draw the foot anatomy, let's just put that in perspective. Let's, let's draw a bit of a rectangle. And then where the base of the foot would be, some of the toe. I usually like using the big toe as the big reference for how things would be drawn. And see, it, it kind of helped me out in some regards. All right, uh, ankles will be kind of like in this area. The inside angles will usually be a bit taller, but in this case, it doesn't even matter because Goku's uh, boots are going to hide it. And as if we're looking at our reference, the boots kind of kind of go near where the halfway point of the shin would be. Uh, the pants flares out into like a diamondish type of shape, and it goes kind of just straight into where the rest of the body would be. So it flares out kind of where the knees-ish would be. Flares out, goes up, which will be adding a lot more folds and dynamics to how the character's going to look anyways. All right, am I happy with this? I think I need to flare out the arms a little bit more. We're getting close. We're getting close, but not quite. So let's take off that ruler. I don't really want that ruler to be showing right now. And uh, let's uh, grab everything because we're using digital. And let's make it slightly bigger, because I'm not happy with how that looks. It looks a little bit too tiny for me, especially for Goku standards. All right, control D, control T to grab the everything in the actual space of the layer. Move it down a little bit. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's take a look at our reference pose. Let's see, is that accurate? Of course, my pose can be worked on, but that's besides the point. I'm going to re-enable my symmetrical, uh, symmetrical, my symmetry ruler that I've uh, made before. And, because like I said, this is just kind of going into what it is already. Yeah, they're huge. <laughs> See, you, you, you learn and draw with uh, trial, and, uh, trial and error. Trial and error, you learn as you go. Drawing the character and figuring out how they look. However, I'm still not happy with how these, uh, what you want to call it? These arms looking. I feel like they need to be folded up a little bit further. So, let's turn off our ruler. And let's grab some arms. Right quick. Let's move this arm. Let's just move it out, out of the way. Because we're going to have to rotate the entire arm. Because I don't like the where the, the arm is. 
grab it in the middle point. Let's just move it out of the way. Let's grab the rest of the arm. And unfortunately, this is just the advantage of having uh, digital art versus the advantage of having uh, digital art over traditional is that you can grab things and change them any way you want. You don't have to erase and redraw. I mean, you can if you really want to, but you don't have to. And if I really want to, yeah, let's, you know what? Let me show you something completely cool with the symmetrical symmetrical tool, shall we? So, actually, yeah, let's just erase what I have because I'm still not really happy with how this looks anyways. We'll keep we'll keep the arm that I have. Uh but anyways, let's let's uh grab this bit. We're going to do the left side. Work smarter, not harder. That's one of the life lessons that everyone needs to learn. Anyways, so we grab that, we we wing, we uh flick that out a little bit. And we can make the tassels of uh, the belt fairly long. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Now, with our symmetrical tool, re-engaged. <laughs> Let's uh, reapply some of these lines that we're establishing before. And plus, we have to reapply some stuff as well. So we're getting we're getting kind of close, kind of close to how we're wanting things. And if you really want to be very uh, precise with drawing, if you're still fairly new at the beginning of drawing, uh, you can measure the amount of heads we got uh, compared to the rest of the body. So if we measure our heads, and I'm just going to get a rough estimate because I'm using my stylus pen technique. We got three, four. About around seven heads. That's that's about accurate for uh, how the regular anatomy is. Yeah, you can technically get away with uh, seven to eight and a half heads if you're trying to be atomically correct. Um, but anyways, we we get, we mostly got our construction down now of how we want the character to look. He's fairly big, uh, beefy, and uh, he kind of looks like Oku. So we got our construction of the full base. Um. Don't have to really draw a whole heck of a lot of details involving the shapes of I, I draw I draw the top half of the shapes just because when you're looking at Goku, granted half of it's gonna be hidden just because of the clothing he has. However, having under understanding of the anatomy underneath helps out with trying to figure out what how the rest of the clothes underneath is going to be lying down, if that makes any sense. It's just uh learning how, the anatomy of the characters. So with that in mind, we are going to make a new layer, and we're going to go back down to our layer and with the ruler, and let's have this uh, symmetric symmetrical layer tool ruler uh, show in all layers. So this will allow me to draw symmetrically, which to be fair, when I draw the hair, it's not going to work, but that's besides the point. Uh, the hair is completely asymmetrical. but we can get down the rest of Goku's details. Um, so let's let's start with drawing the head shape. So if we're looking at Goku, his head shape is, I mean, it's the typical anime looking shape. <laughs> let's be honest here. But I'm going to change my color and we're going to zoom in, zoom in on the head, right? So we got a basic shape already, but Goku's head is fairly angular, but also roundish. If that makes any sense whatsoever. Fairly angular, but roundish. <laughs> uh, it flares out. And let's get our chrome dome. Uh, his chin is a little bit longer. So I'm going to flare it out a little bit further. Down at the bottom, or taper it a little bit better. I'm going to erase the old line so I don't get confused. I'm just using a hard eraser. Because these are still essentially guidelines to me. Uh, if you really want to, you can draw, actually, uh, this head needs to be slightly flatter. Uh, we're going to go about halfway, not quite. Is that about halfway? Maybe it's closer. Okay. It's about maybe, I'm rough measuring here. It's not quite halfway, but it's kind of where the head starts to taper off. Like right here. You see how that is? Just a little bit further down from that. 
So it's in the middle of where the head tapers. Uh, that's where the eyes is going to be based off of. However, this is also where our ears are going to be based off of. So, if we're going back to our green, or at least my green, you can use whatever color you want. You don't have to exactly follow me in this regard. This is just in our basic shapes. Um, with Goku, his ears pop up right through there. Um, and it, it doesn't go to where the taper is. It's just slightly above it. Same, here's our taper for where the chrome dome is. <laughs> chrome dome. Where, uh, anyways, and this is where the base of the eyes is technically would be. Um, the eyes is going to be fairly self-explanatory. When I say self-explanatory, it, it it's not really self-explanatory. Uh, but I want Goku to be more angry. And Goku's eyes typically, like, this, this is Happy Goku. Um, I guess I can draw two different versions. Um, Happy Goku is pretty easy. It's, uh, that's way too close, though. <laughs> well, sort of halfway, not quite. Goes up, down. Down, and we got a bit of a circular looking shape. He's looking down. I don't want him to be looking down. I want him to be looking at us. Sort of. Yeah, there you go. So there's a happy Goku. He has some bushy eyebrows. I just not noticed that. Bushy, bushy eyebrows. Is that about... Eh. Eh. I'm trying to figure out the length of the eyebrows. Is that about right? That seems about right. It looks like with uh, Goku, they don't really draw the eyelids. So I'm not going to draw them. And that's really about it. Uh, it's like a, whatchamacallit? It's like a cylinder, but not really a cylinder. Does that make any sense? It looks like this kind of shape. Looks like that. And then you just erase out the straight line and a little bit at the bottom. And you, you essentially just got a Goku eye right there. I can do that with the other one. That, that's really about it. That's it. That's, that's how you draw a Goku happy eye. Um, let's make a new one, and I just want to show you what a, uh, hold up, let me, let me get rid of the happy eyes, because I want to make an angry eye, because I do want to draw a Super Saiyan version of Goku. So let's hit edit, and then hit a cut, and I don't have a reference for angry Goku, so let me go get one of those right quick. Alright, and now with the power of pausing a recording, if you look at the top right, I got an angry looking Goku now. Well, it's Super Saiyan Goku, but he's always angry looking when he's Super Saiyan. So, with Angry Goku, it's also fairly simple. Uh, are we in my correct layer? Yes, we are. Um, which is the uh, eyes that I want anyways, but it's pretty pretty easy. So, Goku is angry, so he has a very triangular-ish. I'm also drawing the eyebrows, because it. Uh, if you look right here, it kind of folds. It wings out toward, past the eyes. So, we got that. It goes down to where our eye line would be, sort of. No, I'll, go, I'll make it a little bit past that, just slightly. And it's more like a, it's almost triangular, but not. Anyways, his eyes slightly flare up at the big top. We also got to look how close it is. So I might have drawn it a little bit too far away, just by a hair. So we flare it up just a little bit, if you see where my cursor is. And it flares back into where the end of the eyebrow would be. When I'm drawing, when I'm drawing the uh, actual inking, it's going to look a, a lot better. Right now we're just trying to get ideas. And am I happy with that? Or do I want it narrow? Do I want it more flared? Anyways, this will work for now. This just gives me an idea of how I want the character to look. We haven't started any kind of inking whatsoever. I feel like the ears are a little bit small. I feel like it is. So we're going to go back in here and we're going to mess with the ears slightly more. I don't know what you want to call this ligament of the ear, but it's a little flap above the uh, ear canal. And then we got the cartridge, cartilage, whatever you want to call it, at, the, at that point 
and a little bit of it's nothing it's not a bone you only have like three bones in your ear and they're really really tiny i think they're the tiniest bones in your body anyways goku's nose which i am actually going to turn off my symmetrical ruler use a reference here and draw a bit of a triangle looking shape to identify where the nose is the mouth the mouth would be a lot lower than how uh, most anatomy would be. It's actually really, really close to the nose. So, I want him to be smiling. I don't want him to be completely... He's like ready to... He's wanting to fight, you know? Is that kind of accurate? Nah. Maybe not that big. Maybe a little bit closer to the nose. Maybe. See, it's all figuring things out. Am I happy with that? I can't see. Let's turn off that. Oh, wrong there. There we go. Is that how I want it? It's kind of close. He has like, what you want to call it? These, uh, it's not really a, a blush, but it's like weird looking lines. Anyways, that's, that's close. That's close. We're getting there. So that's kind of like the head. Now let's draw the hair, I guess. Why not? Let's make a new layer. We do not want the symmetrical tool on. We might need to grab everything first and size it down. Yeah, we're gonna have to grab everything first. Size it down. I'm holding shift to keep the horizontal uh, shape forward so you don't move the actual drawing. Anyways, right now, like I said, I'm just trying to get ideas for how, or I, the idea of how the character supposed to look. Anyways, we're looking at the reference. It has a very, what you call it? Rounded shape right there, flares out into a, how big is that? Let's measure, hold up. It kind of measures now, it's about halfway of the head, or the eyes would be. So what I have is close, is the first uh, spike that I'm drawing, is base is about halfway wide as the head. So. And is it past the halfway point? See, this is where you got to pay attention to details if you're trying to make it accurate. So, what I draw was close, but not quite. It does go over the halfway point, but not quite. So, that's a little bit more accurate. The next one is a little bit bigger. It's about way halfway as well. I think it's slightly over halfway. So, let's get that measurement rough where it would be. Something like that. And if we're looking, his hair goes into a circle above his head. It's all the above his head in a circle. So that'll help you out in that regard as well. It comes up from a triangle, goes around a point, and then comes back down. That about accurate. Above the head. Let's move it slightly. I want to keep this line or keep this a little bit. A little bit. Transform. Rotate slightly. Just about right there. And the reason why I'm saying that it doesn't go quite over the ear. It does a little bit, but not a lot. Is that about accurate? Also, another thing to think about is the top of the hair. It kind of goes in the circular shape too, but I can draw that straight. So, I'm just going to wing it. His next shape goes, kind of aligns with the ear. But not quite. This is where rotating would come into handy, which I'm going to rotate here. It makes my wrist work a little bit better. Keep that line in a good way. I want to keep that flourish looking shape. And this is the biggest one, so I can kind of go at it with what I will. But if we were trying to measure in it, a rougher measurement would be a little bit bigger than our old spike and about maybe two thirds of the way of where the edge of the, not the ear, but the edge of the head would be. So two thirds. Is that about accurate? Yeah, I'll, I eyeballed it fairly decently, if I do say so myself. 
what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure I get that curvature of the hair correct. Anyways, the three big spikes are done. Now let's move on to the last little spike. It's a little bit above the ear. It is also the smallest. It comes out of the big spike. And I am just going to wing it and eyeball it. But that seems pretty close. It's about maybe halfway to how the other spike is from where the ear is. Yeah, about halfway. Do I have it about halfway? If I eyeball it. It's close. So I'm pretty happy with that. So that's uh, that part. Let's go ahead and draw this second part. And yes, I am going to add those little strands to what my reference has. So I, mean, I can do that right quick too. Just a little, little hair. A little bitty here that goes in the middle. Boom and boom. All right. So let's uh, move on to the second half. I am still going to keep it rotated just because it helps out with my wrist. Um, this part of the hair, we're going to start with the bottom spike where my hand is on the reference. Bottom spike comes out a little bit further. Granted, I'm going to actually have to increase the. the the neck too but anyways uh observations you see as you go this pops out a little bit further past the ear comes back into the triangle uh this one comes out it's about near the same shape but slightly longer than what it is and it pops back in not quite in the halfway point but close the next spike is the biggest one for this side pops out let's measure a rough measurement. If we measure from the edge of the ear to the edge of the spike, and we measure from the edge of the face, it's a little bit over halfway. So, something like that. And if we're coming back in, it's over the ear. I'm going to make it slightly longer. Just because it kind of works with what I have. And last spike. If we measure the edge of the spike to the edge of where the hair begins, like this little curve from right here to where this end of the curve is. I'm measuring that. I measure that to the edge of the face. It's about halfway. So if we do our little measurement tool of a halfway point of the edge of the face to where that is and to where the hair is, it's going to be something right there. But I'm going to make it a little bit further than that just because of our reference. And is that accurate? Let's uh, make it vertical. Let's actually also erase some of our guidelines to kind of get an idea of what we're looking at here. That's not bad. It's pretty close, pretty accurate for what we got. Just looking at and observating. Observating. I'm making up new words here. Observing. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and grab the crown of the hairline. And I'll tell you a measurement in a second, I'm trying to get give you an idea. Oh, come on, vertical. All right, so what I'm doing here, we're looking where the eyes, like if we start at the tip top of where that photo is, the edge of it is about, it's a little bit further than how the nose is. So like maybe slightly, what I have is pretty accurate just by eyeballing it. The bottom of the edge of the eyes up to the forehead is about close to halfway of the where the uh, eyes is to the chin. Pretty close to that. It's not quite. It's maybe slightly longer, but not by much. Anyways, hopefully that's a that's a rough estimate. But let's go ahead and start drawing our first spike. This spike go, doesn't go past the eye of what Goku has. So let's make sure that we don't do that. And it's fairly big. I'm just eyeballing at this point. Yeah, that looks close. His next spike pops out from where that one is. It goes down. It will go over the eye slightly. Just by looking at it. It's about maybe halfway point. Let's back up into a spike. The next one does go over the eye as well. It's a very, very sharp looking curve, but whatever. Purpose looking curve goes over the eyebrow. And the last one kind of curves in. It's like a very, almost very curvy, 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 curly hair. It's like curly hair, but not quite. 
anyways, let's uh, get an idea of the reference of how it looks. Erase our guidelines. This doesn't look too bad. And looks like we got two spikes coming out right here. And right here at the beginning of the ear. And that's our hair for base Goku. That's probably the more difficult part, the drawing Goku. At least I would say. And I've drawn a lot of characters. Also, I, got, I forgot. Hold on there. I'm going to go back to this. And re-enable that. And actually draw my neck a little bit bigger. Because it was a little bit long. And I forgot some muscles. So I'm going to add this muscle. The, it's like a throat muscle. It goes from the back of your head. Like if we, if we draw the head right quick. Like just a rough head or whatever. Rough head. We were drawing the neck. These muscles right here actually comes in the back of the neck and goes down. I forget the actual terminology for it, but that's just, just how anatomy, the human anatomy works. Anyways, uh, it goes to where the beginning of the, for what Goku has. Beginning of that, of uh, the collarbone. He doesn't really show a collarbone, a curia. Kira Toriyama. Did I say his name right? The guy who created uh, Goku. <laughs> I think I said his name right. I might have butchered it. If I did, I apologize. Anyways, I still like Goku. He's cool. And all this is going to be showing, so let's draw these traps a little better. And this is kind of like where I would start getting to more detail of the actual muscles, but we got that part of Goku down. Let's go ahead and start drawing his top part of the gi. So let's go ahead and grab a new layer. The blue comes in, it makes, is it symmetrical? It looks symmetrical to me, so we're gonna make it symmetrical. Comes in, it shows a bit of the, uh, the chest uh, muscles. It wraps back around, so let's draw the reference for how it wraps back around. And what I do is like, this is the shoulder muscle, this is the end bit, and this is the, where it comes in, and it looks like it wraps around. So that's what I'm doing. I also need to erase this out since I'm using symmetrical. Anyways, comes in, wraps around, and it doesn't really go far. It also, it like, it, the other part of the gi begins. So let's go ahead and draw that bit. It follows the same line as the other gi, but goes past further. Creating a triangular and I'm actually going to turn off my symmetrical tool here because it's not quite symmetrical here. So it comes in and makes a bit of a triangular looking shape. Triangular-ish. I'm going to make it go a little bit past the midway point just by a little bit and have it come back in. So it's almost symmetrical, but not quite. Just by observation. I'm going to turn it back on though so we can draw the rest of it. So, all right. As we did before on how I was drawing that, we're going to do this again. And we're going to make this fold down for the beginning of the delts are. And it goes a little bit past it and comes back in. It does not show any of the chest muscle. And plus the other part of the clothing will hide it as well. So we're going to kind of have it meet where the chest muscle enters the deltoid, which will create the armpit. Um, we're going to make it wrap around the bicep slightly because that's what it does in our reference. Uh, we're going to actually have to change this. Or do I want to change this? It might change a little bit. And I don't like it. I'm going to undo a few of those lines and make it a little bit sharper. And have it come back in or out, I should say. Right in this. All right. Am I happy with that? I feel like I'm pretty happy. I'm going to make another reference line. Or not really a reference line, but it's like a crease looking line. So we got that. Let's draw this uh, shoulder. Uh, part of the gi. We're going to do our little technique before. Have it wrap around. We're going to make a bit of a fold. Coming in. To simulate it um, creasing up to where the shoulders are, because it's going to be creasing up a lot right there. Right there, it's going to be creasing up a lot. Anyways, we got that bit done. Uh, let's start beginning to draw his little strap in the middle. 
So with that in mind, his he is going to flare out slightly. Creating folds to make it look like that. Let's draw this middle knot. It's gonna be pretty self-explanatory, pretty pretty simple. Which I'm just like I said, I'm using symmetrical. But uh it's just like a it's like a circle. They're not quite a circle, but it's like a a rectangle-ish looking shape. That's kind of like what it looks like. So let's draw the rest of this. I'm not gonna flare it out like I did before. I might do it a little bit, but not a whole lot. Because I want it to be going back into where we're at. And uh at the same time, uh we want this to be coming out because my pose, what I have, is he's about to tighten it. So it's coming out like that. I need to turn off my symmetrical tool here because the little lines not lines, but links of the little tables are different. So let's I'm not show an all. I actually did I just there we go. <laughs> Alright, so we got the little towels getting grabbed. One's coming out. It's gonna be a little bit longer and further than the other. This is gonna be a little bit shorter. Let's get rid of uh, these smaller bits of lines. Okay. Let's, since we don't have the symmetrical tool on, let's go ahead and add some lines to show the depth of the actual shirt inside of the gi. And I'm just using the references of the actual character at this point. Anyways, well, actually, just to just to make simple, I'm not going to draw the symbol. <laughs> We're going to have Goku without a symbol. He's going to be past all this. Anyways, let's go ahead and start drawing the hand, shall we? We're going to re-enable our symmetrical tool just to make it easier on us. We are going to start drawing the wrist brand, wrist band. My gosh, I'm terrible. And these forearms are definitely a lot bigger than what I've drawn. We'll make it slightly bigger. Just by a little bit. Alright. Wristband. 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 These wristbands are mm, kind of big. Sort of big. We're going to kind of do the similar aspects that what I did before with the shoulders up here. Anyways. Now. Let's start drawing some hands, shall we? The fun part, the thing that most artists love drawing. When I'm saying this, is all sarcastic. Hands are not easy. So the reason why I draw these uh, squares looking shapes because that kind of simula simulates what the hand would be doing. And it's gonna be like a fist looking uh, way, if that makes any sense. So we're drawing the top of the hand. Most of the, most of the thumb's gonna be kind of actually hidden. So I'm just gonna kind of reference where the thumb will be. So it comes out, it comes underneath. The hand is a three-dimensional shape. Remember that. It's not two-dimensional. So, we got our fingers to form the beginning of the hand. I've only drawn three fingers. Let me actually add another finger. See, and this is where drawing hands can be difficult. So, we got all that. Let's uh, try to figure out where this side of the hand is going to be. I'm going to rotate it to kind of help myself out. All right, so that's close. Maybe not quite. So I'm just making it slightly bigger. All right, so let's begin with the pinky since that's going to be the main thing that you'll see in this in uh, for this hand flares out like and I'm thinking of like this so flares out comes down and then comes back in because this is very what you call it uh it's flat so a lot, a lot a lot of it's going to really affect and luckily with this angle it kind of hides the hand so I don't have to really draw too much of it just remember that the hand the fingers is about the same height as the actual palm. Just remember that when you're drawing these hands. Rounding up these fingers. 
and boom, we got our hands completed. And we're, we're, this is starting to look like Goku. Straight up, starting to look like Goku. It'll look a lot better when I actually do line art, but that's besides the point. It's starting to look like Goku. He's like he's getting ready to fight. So let's start the let's start let's start drawing the pants. The pants is pretty self-explanatory as well. Pretty simple. Um, uh, we are going to have our symmetrical tool enabled just to make things a lot easier and quicker. Let's start flaring out where the beginning of the boots are because we already started that. Flare back inwards and have it start coming back to where this would be the crotch area. Or give it shape to how that's going to be looking. It's just more like a V looking shape. I am drawing terrible. Kind of like that looking shape because the crotch comes out. Or V ish. But, anyways, you, you get the idea. There's creases for how the body is. When you, when you have legs coming out and whatnot, and you have something where it bends, there's going to be uh, folds to the, to the actual where the joint is. And where the pelvis is, your legs come out and your legs can go up and down. See, I'm drawing double the amount with the symmetrical tool. <laughs> you see how strong the symmetrical tool can be. Anyways, we're just trying to get a uh, fairly simple looking shape. Have the... Actually, you know what? I don't want that to be looking symmetrical, though. See, this is where sometimes the symmetrical, symmetrical tool is not going to help you out. You can just get general ideas, but you're going to have to change things up. So let's turn it off. Actually, no, no, no. We're going to keep it on. We're going to keep it on so we can actually draw the boots. Boots, boots, boots. So the boots, uh, let's make them flare out slightly to kind of give the idea of where the rim of the boot is. Because uh, Goku has tucked his pants gi, gi pants, into the boot. Comes out straight forward. And if we look at our reference, it kind of folds back in into where this string is going to be. This is lower. We're looking lower. Um, things like, say for example, hold up. Let me. I gotta explain this one little drawing thing that you need to learn. So when drawing characters, if they're going up, it's gonna be kind of like a. Like this is the middle of them. So this is where the head is. The body is gonna be just kind of straight or straight-ish, and then the bottom is gonna be more curved. So when we're drawing these strings, the bottom of the the strings is going to actually look a lot more curved than how the rest of it. It, it gives it the dynamic shape of how volume works. Anyways, let's re-enable our reference here to give an idea of what we're drawing. Um, and flare out these boots slightly more to kind of give an idea where the ankles are. I guess that's the idea of these boots. Anyways, and let's draw our string. We're just get this shape first. And if we're looking at it, it's fairly simple looking. It's just like a little circle, circle, and then a little rectangle coming out, another little rectangle coming out. That's that's what it looks like our tool of drawing is going to be. So let's do that. It looks like it's fairly symmetrical too. So there, there. Little looking flare thing popping out. Little flare thing popping out. And the rest of the boot, shall we? Uh, that's where the heel is going to be, so it's going to come up. Uh, the beginning of what's that? What's that? Like big toe? It's gonna make it a little bit of an indent. That's why uh, we got that in the actual reference. They're making an indent to where the big toe will be. Comes up to where the tip of the shoe is or boot, and we're going to kind of reference where the flat of the foot is, and we are going to bring down. Actually, you know what? I'm wrong. The foot is flared upwards down into where that is to kind of give it shape of how big your foot is. By the way, a little little tip of drawing feet. Is that accurate looking to me? Hold up, hold up. Something something caught my eye. Yeah, that can work. Anyways, <laughs> you get distracted when you're drawing things. Oh, uh, shoot. Let's draw these... Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. I also forgot the lines of the shoe. So, center of the boot. 
or center ish of the boot. Did I have a centered? I got a centered ish. Comes down. We're going to make it look like it's popping upwards to give shape of the boot itself. And with Goku, we also got the stripes at the side of the boot coming down. Or not side, but uh, at the bottom of the boot. They got it, kind of give it more shape. Anyways, and that's our boot. I'm not happy with it. I still don't feel happy with it. Is it these tassels? Are they are they in the wrong spot? Maybe they're in the wrong spot. Maybe I'm drawing this. I'm drawing the. I feel like I'm drawing this uh, wrong. All right. Close enough. Good enough for now. <laughs> At least for me. Okay. So we got all that together. Now let's go ahead and start drawing these tassels as uh, a folding to kind of make it look like the thing is actually a fabric, shall we? And all I'm doing is just making folds, triangles. You want folds to be triangular, straight up. You don't want it to be squarish unless it like makes sense. Like for example, with the with the knees, it looks like the creators make. Am I symmetrical? I am symmetrical. I need to turn that off. Anyways, this is uh, coming down pretty good. So, we zoom out. Looks like we pretty much got a Goku. There was one minor thing that I missed. He is going to have uh, more of these lines to kind of simulate the leg, kind of how it is. You can also simulate a bit of a flow to your fabric of the tassels for his key, pants key thing, belt, pants key belt thing. <laughs> and yeah, that's mostly just Goku. It's kind of hard to see. But once you start trying to figure out the final lines of it, then you got, you got a Goku. So let me go ahead and speed this up to time lapse. So then you can actually get in a final feel for how the Goku looks. And you'll start seeing what I'm talking about when I do that. Right, with the power of editing, we're able to get right back into coloring, I should say, uh, Goku. And coloring in digital is actually very simple, straightforward. I can hit the, what you want to call it, uh, Magic Salon. So like I is W for the short key. What was it called? Uh, the auto select. There you go. Auto select key. Things like a magic wand for um, uh, Photoshop. Couldn't, couldn't ever think of it. Anyways, hit W to get a selection of everything. I'm just going to get a reference color right there. I am going to make a new layer underneath uh, the line art. And we're just going to fill everything in. Pretty self explanatory. So we got our base uh, Goku looking orange. I missed a small spot. So we're going to go back to here. I'm also going to make this a reference layer just to make it easier so I don't have to keep on switching back and forth. So we got a reference layer. I'm just going to paint that little bit in. And yeah. Now we have our orange. So let's zoom in on our reference photo here. Grab this blue. Shall we? Hit a new layer. And then hit our auto select tool. I'm holding shift, by the way, to select multiple things at the same time. I need to zoom in a little bit because it's not grabbing absolutely everything. You can also do the lasso tool as well by hitting L. Oh, M, my bad. Not L. M. M, M. For the lasso tool to grab up the little bit of smaller things. Uh, go around and grab the rest of the stuff that's going to be blue. Make sure that you're inside the lines and grab all the selection that you need to grab. That looks like all the blue that we need. 
And with our handy dandy new layer, we can paint everything in. Or you can hit the fill bucket tool and select the spots that need to be filled. But, oh, looks like I missed a little spot. So I'll go back to hit W, grab all that, and fill it in. So now we got all of our blue of Goku. Let's grab down here. Is that the same blue? That's not the same blue, is it? The darker blue, very, very slightly. So we're gonna grab a new layer. I also missed that glow. So let me go back into it. Hit W there. Grab this right quick. That color and paint that in. Very quick, very simple with digital art. Anyways, so let's, uh, got a new layer. Let's hit W, just auto select everything. And looks like we got everything. Yep, everything is selected. And I'm gonna hit the fill bucket tool this time. And we're going to fill everything in. Very self-explanatory. Make sure you uh, zoom in to some of the sharper details because you might miss some stuff. Like you see right there, I'm, uh, the auto select did not grab it. And also, I missed this little overlap. It, it did do it over here as well. So I just want to go in and paint right into it. You can, of course, paint this all in, but it's very, very time consuming. So we're also going to zoom in a little bit further, grab this color. And in this layer, I'm just going to do them both the same. I hit W for auto select on Clip Studio Paint and just go around and select everything that I want to get. Hit P for paintbrush and paint it in. I'm just going to do the same with everything else and I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, and just like that, all the colors are in here pretty much. I still missed one little spot. Let me grab that. Sometimes the auto select will not grab absolutely everything and will leave gaps sometimes, but you can just fill it in fairly quick and easily, just like I'm doing here. However, uh, the next thing we're going to do with drawing Goku is basic shading. I, let me make a new layer. I'm going to make a light source that's coming in this way. Let me get a better, bigger brush. Light source is coming in this way. Remember that. So with that in mind, I'm going to make a new layer. Actually, no, 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 no. I am going to hold shift, and I'm going to grab all the layers. I'm going to duplicate them, and then I'm going to merge them. So now, I have a secondary layer that has everything that's already been colored. I'm going to go up here where it says lock transparent pixels. I'm going to make it completely white. There's a reason for the madness. Uh, just stay with me. So I'm just going to do uh, basic cell shading. That's how it is with anime. Uh, I would do three layers, but I'm not doing it. I'm just going to do one layer. Let's grab a mid-tone of a gray. And since the light is coming this way, we got to think about a three-dimensional three shape. Oh, and I somehow missed one crucial detail involving Goku. Uh, let's turn that off and turn off the skin layer. I want to turn on back my drafting. I forgot his Adam's apple. There you go. Easy fix. All right, where was I? <laughs> All right, get about round, I don't know, somewhere in the middle, sort of, or gray. You see what, what I'm doing when I get started. So anyways, you might be thinking, why Why do you do that? Why? You, what's, what's all this for? And the reason is simple, we are doing some basic shading. Uh, the light source is coming in from this direction, so we have to think on how three-dimensional shapes will interact with how uh, the light source is coming into. So all of this right here is going to be completely gray. It's making a cast shadow. Luckily with uh, the design of Goku, it's already kind of forced. Some shadows to where the eyes are. Uh, the light source is also going to create some cast shadows where the hairline is. A 
And by the way, since it's just uh, both, it's going to be both sides because this is a three dimensional shape. Remember that. Three dimensional shape is going to have shadows on both sides. Add all that. Now, granted, we can go further and make this look even more three dimensional. Since the shadows are coming in this way, what kind of shape is Goku's head? A sphere. So, with that in mind, we can go in and start sphering up the shadow-ish area, if, that's any, if that makes any kind of sense whatsoever. Since the, uh, I'm making this transition line a bit more in this direction. Now, hear me out when I'm doing this. Uh, I'm not worried about the highlights quite yet. I'm doing it more so with the with the hair than I am the actual face, but I'm going to go back in with it with the with the white, and I'll do it with this hair bit right here because I'm not happy with how it's looking. So I'm coming back in the white, and I'm bringing that white back in to add back to the effect of it being a three-dimensional shape. Let's uh, zoom in slightly to get better accuracy for the strand of hair right there. A little bit right there. Uh, Goku's hair is going to be pretty much, I think, eh, we'll, look, eh, we'll make it a little bit showing up. So let me grab my white. We'll make it show up just a little bit. Boom. So I'm going to finish up this face uh, before I put it in the time lapse. Because essentially all you're trying to do is figure out your three-dimensional shapes for how the character's going to be looking. Since I have this uh, divide line, coming in, I could start doing even more harsh or bigger shadows on different areas. Uh, we're going to make most of the face kind of hidden in this regard. Put a bit of a cast shadow right there for the underlip. But I kind of want the face to be showing mostly. Um, most animes usually keep the face fairly shown, if that makes any sense. Uh, let's do a little bit of shadowing here, uh, some shadowing underneath the chin area, what's going to happen. Most of this is actually going to be in shadows. I'm going to provide a little bit of lighting on where the throat area is. Shadows right there. And most of this is going to be shadow. Show a little bit of that. Dip it. No, we won't. We're, we're going to hide it all. Screw it. I'm going to re-highlight some of this. And the clothes is going to create a small cast shadow on where the chest is small cast shadow for how this throat is doing and the ear let's zoom in on the ear because this actually has some cast shadows as well and just affect shadows which is how it is drawing so a little bit of that structure of the ear all right and now let's get back into the finish up this hair once I'll, I'll finish up this hair and then I'm going to finish the rest of the drawing in time lapse and at the final bit, I will probably try to do a Super Saiyan version, which is pretty simple in itself. All we'll be doing is just changing the hair. But uh, yeah, let me let me finish up this hair, the base version of hair first, before we even think about getting into that, because there is a good chunk of hair still left. So if we got the light coming in down this way, where my cursor is, think about it in three-dimensional shape. So we got a bit of a triangular-ish looking shape. Coming down in, coming straight where the tip is. Now I'll just fill this guy in. I'm gonna grab my white because I don't have quite a straight line right there. Boom. Doing a little bit more of the shading right there to give the effect of the color. We're going to create a small cast shadow where their ear is. A it's not really a cast shadow, it's more like a well it is a cast shadow, it's the ear. Uh 
surface shadow. And that's that's pretty much about it. That Goku is really simple with shading. Well, at least doing the shell, cell shading, which you can do cell shading in different ways as well. Uh, here, let me show you one quick example of cell shading that you could do. Which we'll be grabbing the lasso tool by hitting M. Uh, the first bit's not going to matter so much considering where we are. And what I'm doing is I am going around and I am creating this outline. I can get rid of some stuff, add some, add some back in. And this will create a bit of a cast shadow. You can add or subtract whatever you want when you're adding these uh, cast shadows. Or for cell shading when you're doing the lasso tool. I'm just showing you a different method that some artists use when making cell shading uh, easier or more unique. It just depends on what you want to do. Which, whatever you think is easier to you. I, I will do both depending on how elaborate things are. If it's more realistic, I will probably do the lasso tool more so. But it just requires you to zoom in sometimes so you can get these accurate lines. Sometimes you don't, but a lot of times you do. I'm in with this triangle. Fix up that bit. But this tutorial is not really so much about shading as it is just drawing Goku. So I'm going to fill this in right quick just to show you the effect. So let's grab our base color and either we can hit the fill bucket tool, which it doesn't matter which one you want to do. You can do either one. But I'm just going to paint it in just because it'd be a lot easier and you don't have to worry about missing something. And yeah, that's what the cell shading technically is. I'm just painting it in just to show you. And make sure you don't hit erase. Make sure you grab the white back and paint it back in. You can't really erase because I just mess, made that messed up that tool too. Because when you erase and see how it, we have the uh, pixel selected and you try to paint over it, you can't. So don't erase when you're using what I'm what I'm trying to do right here. So let me grab this one little cast shadow. And all right. I will see you guys in a second. I'm going to finish uh, painting in the shade and then I guess we'll draw the Super Saiyan version of Goku. See you guys in a bit. And boom, just like that, we have finished drawing base Goku. So let's do a zoom out. And I'm am going to change the highlights and I'm going to bring it down to about round maybe 50. So yeah, 50 looks not too bad. Actually, you know what? Let's let's bring it down even further. Let's make it 25. Alright, 25 looks pretty good to me. Uh, however, there is one thing I don't like. Our little glow up here did go away, so I'm just going to re-add it. Because I did like how that looked. How everything else is just a little bit too striking. And honestly, you can go back over some of the highlights on the skin and some of the clothes to kind of give it... Uh, try to reduce some of that glowness down. Also missed a couple highlights here and there. But not, not too much. It, it's not that big of a deal. Just some minor stuff. Anyways, uh, this is regular base Goku. He's done. So Super Super Saiyan Goku. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and save our project here. Let's save it as Goku. Our Goku base in this thing, in this sense. Goku base. All right. So what we're going to do now, once we have all of this, let's go ahead and hit file new so we can keep our Goku here and let's grab absolutely everything shall we including our draft lines I mean we don't really need the draft lines too much yeah we don't need the draft lines so let's copy or actually we can't do it right there edit copy go to our new drawing and hit 
uh, Control V, and that will paste all of our layers that we just done back down. However, I just now noticed, have, was I flipped the entire time? <laughs> I was flipped the entire time. All right, so this is not flipped. So here, here's a little thing that I didn't do. Um, because our Goku, when we're looking at our reference, our hair is wrong now. It's a pretty easy fix. So what we can do, since we don't have any layers selected, we can hit Edit, Transform, and then Rotate Horizontal. That didn't do it. That did that wrong. So if I grab, go up here, grab all of our layers, including the draft lines, we'll hit Edit, uh, go to Transform, and then flip horizontally. And just like that, our Goku is correct. Now, since we already have base Goku, we do not need this hair. And with that in mind as well, let's go ahead and select the hair with our auto select uh, bit. And now let's go to our multiply. We're going to change this back to normal, by the way, and erase it. Or actually, yeah, we're going to erase it. Erase all of it. And let's start drawing Goku's Super Saiyan hair, shall we? His hair is literally... Let's see, if we measure the base of the hair down to the tip, it's about as big as his entire chest. <laughs> That's pretty big. So if we measure that, we have enough space. Barely. But we have enough. So somewhere right here, to all the way down here. Essentially, it's just going to be a giant open looking cone. Honestly, I probably need to find a front-facing reference for Super Saiyan. Oh, hey, look at there. Look at that. We got a Super Saiyan Goku. That is forward-fronting facing us. And that's exactly what we need. Aha. His hair is so flipping big, though. <laughs> it is so big. All right, so we will have to actually, unfortunately, go back in here, erase all of this. We're going to have to make him slightly smaller. So let's go right here. Zoom everything out. Grab all of our layers. And then transform him to be slightly shorter. Because you have to have huge flipping hair, apparently, to be Super Saiyan Goku. Since we got Super Saiyan now, let's uh, just do ourselves a little favor and redraw his head. Very, very roughly. So we got his head now. His hairline is going to be somewhere right here. It's going to be like a little bit, not quite in the middle. If you look at the uh, regular form. Or the reference is a little bit off. So let's take this first little line, sharp it up a little bit, and then bring it back down over the eye. Curve it back up and around. Just a little bit, and boom. We got our first spiky strand, which honestly, I actually don't like how that one came. If we're using the reference, this just comes over. To the eye itself. Almost, oh, we'll make it go slightly over just to, so it don't have an overlap. Because you don't really want overlaps in your drawings. They make them look kind of crappy. <laughs> so that one comes slightly over the eye. Uh, a little bit of patchwork for the underneath of it. When I'm actually doing the line art, it's going to look a lot different. When I say different, uh, let's explain it. <laughs> let's explain what I'm trying to do here. So see how we got it like it is? So we're going to draw a little bit of the hairline and then just do some straight lines to kind of indicate what it's doing right here on the reference po uh, picture. So let's draw our second strand that comes up about around near halfway-ish. And it, it looks like it's leaning a little bit closer to the right, what's facing us. This next strand goes up, down, and then it gets close to the iris what our front picture is looking like. Comes back up, around, and this one connects apparently. 
So let's go to the next one. It's a little bit about, it's not quite halfway, but a little bit further halfway. Bring it up around past the headline. And let's see, it kind of meets where the iris is. So somewhere right there. And it goes straight down into it. Let's erase some of that corner. And it looks like it goes high in the ear some. So let's fatten up this strand slightly. Fatten the strand up, bro. Okay. Because it looks like it wants to hide the ear some. I'm just going by the reference. All right, let's draw our next strand, which goes above the eyebrow. Down. Does it meet? It does meet past the ear. Travels upwards and goes into the hairline. Our old hairline. Next one goes over the ear. I don't know where it meets, but over the ear. It goes slightly past our other strand and curls back straight into it. Boom. Let's go ahead and get rid of our reference here. How the head is, because our Hair goes way beyond our headline. <laughs> way beyond it. And let's add some more of these lines to uh, show the strand shape. Because that's how they do in the original. Or our, in our reference uh, drawing, I should say. So, next, we're going to start from the left side. Go out. Let's do a measurement. Let's do a rough measurement. Let's see. Let's. Let's take the uh, strand and compare it to the actual face. Actually, it's about as big as the eye. So the strand goes about where the, how long the eye is. There's our first strand. Next strand comes up. And we can measure it too to the, to the face. So a rough estimate is right there. And it's actually hidden behind the other strand, the next strand. So let's erase our little bit of excess right there. The next strand is way bigger. If we do a measurement from the tip to our base hairline, it is about as big as the entire face. So if we do that and we strand it up, our reference is going to be somewhere right there. This comes past the curve, not quite where the strand goes, and then curves up. And if we're looking at our reference here, it doesn't quite, let's see how big that gap is. That gap is about as big as the eye. So we can take our eye, put it right there, give a rough estimate, and it's somewhere right there. It's hard to actually show you what I'm doing, but what I'm literally doing is grabbing my finger as I was doing before and measuring it with my stylus to kind of give a idea of a rough estimate to give us an idea of where the strand's supposed to be located. I'm just erasing some of the excess. Anyways, let's add a couple of the lines to show how the strands look with the hair. Goku hair. All right, now let's start drawing our big strand here. So we measure the tip to end. It is a little bit longer than the face. So probably where the actual Adam's apple is. And it's slightly above the actual hair or the, uh, what you call it? The bangs, there you go. So how I'm measuring it, it the end point somewhere right there. It's gonna come up. It doesn't pass it. It doesn't pass this this line right there. It doesn't really pass where that comes in. So I drew it mine a little bit too long. And then curves upwards. So boom, boom, boom. I'm still not happy with it. It's just trying to figure things out. That looks not too bad. This line comes past over the midway point into kind of not quite, as you see with this, it's not quite where this is, but close. 
So am I happy with that? That looks a little bit better. It's all trial and error when it comes to drawing. Figure it out as you go. Don't make things permanent if they don't have to be permanent. Let's draw our little midline that goes all the way down. Or not all the way down, it goes kind of close to being down. Then another line. I'm just mimicking what we're, what we're seeing in our reference. So, this one comes in, let's see how long it is from where that corner of those two bangs come together to the point. That's about, about the same length as our guy before. So, where the Adam's apple is all the way to the hairline. Somewhere right here, and it comes in about halfway ish and then curves upwards. I don't know if you, if you want to use this as a reference, it kind of goes somewhere in that area, so slightly above it, or yeah, slightly above it. But if we're looking at this, it's sort of actually lower than it, so I'm, I'm going to change what mine has. Slightly, make it slightly longer. And then we're going to bring it down. Does it hit the line? It does not. It's close though. If you look, it's very close, but not quite. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're going to have to. <laughs> hair, your. Goku, your hair is too flipping long, dude. You really need a haircut. I don't even understand. You go from base. So we go from base Goku, barely has any hair, to Super Saiyan that has like a bunch of hair. I don't understand. Anyways, I'm not the designer of Goku. I am just a guy who's drawing Goku. Goku. All right, anyways, so let's make things smaller. Next strand, we're taking the base to where this, our last spike was to the point. It is about both eyes apart. That's the length of it. So rough estimation is somewhere right here. It is not quite halfway point of that strand, but it does curve upwards. And it's fairly, fairly short to the next thing. All right, finally, I say finally, let's not draw the big strand yet, because that's the main point of the hair, isn't it? Let's draw our smaller strands first to kind of build up to that point. That's the best strand of Goku's Super Saiyan hair. So our next strand, it's about halfway across the face from where their ear is, the right side ear, and it goes a little bit further past the ear. Is that about right? Is that about accurate? Yes, that's pretty close. Maybe not quite that long, but somewhere right there. Somewhere right there. Goes in about close to halfway. What a reference shows. All right, now we got this strand. It's a pretty long strand in itself. It's about two-thirds, so from where the hairline is to where the lips are of Goku. And it comes out of the hair like something like this. Our strands like that. This comes to the end. Does it meet the ear? It does meet the ear. So, I'm going to flare it down and point it up. Flare it in and have it connect to where midpoint or where this thing bends sort of almost like the midpoint if we were to make this straight because it kind of needs to be straight anyways it'll be in the midpoint so we got that little bit goku's next strand we're actually going to draw this strand first just because it's in the front so if we look how long this is going from that end all the way to the point it will It's about as big as the entire face, maybe slightly longer, slightly. So rough estimate of the shape. Up from there to there. Yes, that's pretty close. Now let's take a look at where it is directly up and down for how this is. So if we're measuring it, 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 it lines kind of straight with how this bit the band band bit the bangs come together so 
we're going to keep it right there. This comes down past it, past the little curve point. And then curve sharply into it. Slightly, slightly past the bend. Comes down just a little bit. Actually, it's pretty sharp. Comes down just a little bit and then goes outwards. Make it slightly sharper. In a better shape. Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. We have a Goku strand. All right, now let's just add a couple of lines as we did before to indicate some of the strands that Goku has. It's about as long as eyes across again. So we grab both the eyes links across all the way and then bring it up to where it would be. It'll be somewhere in this area. Comes down about a little bit past halfway and this goes over the bend. Make it slightly longer. I don't like how it's looking. That looks pretty good. Pretty close. Add our little two strands to indicate where the things are. The hair is. And now our big boy strand, huh? So our big boy strand, if we're looking at them straight out, straight across, straight up. It's going to be going to the right a little bit. So let's see. It kind of matches where the ear is. Kind of. Pretty close. I think we can get away with that. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring it up straight. That's just a reference. Kind of gives an idea where our strand needs to be. So if we go to our last strand, and I'm going from the tip to tip. Tip to tip. That is... About both the eyes across again, or you can make it about halfway across the face. So I'm going to do both the eyes across. This includes the middle bit of the uh, eyebrow, the where you get stretched, stretched up and angry. You know, I'm going to do that. But it's a little bit longer than what I have. That looks pretty close. So somewhere, right there. I need red though. Somewhere right there where our indication needs to be. So we can get rid of that reference. So we can come in. This bin is a little bit further than what that is. It comes up. And this comes out. And bada bing, bada boom, we have a Super Saiyan. And that's pretty close. I'm pretty happy with that. So, with this in mind, I'm going to go back in time lapse and I'm going to ink it. And just like that, we are completely done with drawing Goku, both Super Saiyan version and base version. So let's go ahead and hit a save as on this. Let's do another layer. Get your black in and do a, I'm going to put my brush at a 10. Put in your signature for both of the drawings. Oops. New layer. And signature. If you really want to, you can go ahead and date it as well. Um, I don't really date my stuff. I have to save it on my computer. Unless it's traditional, then I will date it. Anyways, that's Goku for you. 
if you want me to do a different version of Goku, please let me know in the comments below, or a different character in general. I draw a magnitude of different characters. I've drawn Spider-Gwen, I've drawn Cthulhu in a realistic uh, version, which I don't think I can do a true tutorial version of that. But hopefully this step-by-step -step deep dive on drawing a character kind of helps you out. We dived in a, in a few minor things, uh, construction lines, anatomy, um, base colors, some shading techniques. So we kind of went over a lot of every little bitty thing. Um, however, I could go into more detail on explaining things like further among the shading or further among the anatomy. Uh, is this my best drawing in the world? No, it's not. However, it's a solid drawing. I would give it a probably a good 7 or 8 out of 10. And hopefully you guys agree. Hopefully you grab something that's uh, interesting to kind of give you an idea how to draw Goku. And if I compare this to my old drawing of Goku, this is 10 times better. <laughs> so that's something else to think about when drawing. You're going to be bad at the start. That's something you got to realize. And over time, you get better as you learn how things progress. And you learn from different, different artists. And you build your repertoire. You build your tools and understanding of how to make artwork. Artwork is a slow process. It's a hard learning curve. But once you learn how to do everything, it is very fun to get things done. And that rhymed. I wasn't even trying to rhyme. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching. Take it easy. Please let me know in the comments below for anything else you want me to be drawing or having a tutorial on. Uh, I try to post on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but I might be switching up to Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Haven't decided that yet, but we're going to probably be sticking with the first one. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. And we shall see all of you in the next drawing video. Later.